Uh, welcome to another video on the iGetChem channel where we help you learn chemistry the easy way by showing you how to solve problems. Today's video is on the calculation of the pH of a weak acid solution. So let's take a look at the question. Uh, a. Calculate the pH of a 0.0475 molar solution of HNO2 and B. Calculate the percent dissociation. Okay, so let's take a look. So uh, let's take a look at the question. We have the acid HNO2. So let me write that down. Uh, HNO2 is actually nitrous acid. Uh, so don't confuse that with HNO3, which we see quite often, which is called nitric, which is called nitric acid. Uh, the difference between nitric and nitrous acid is that, of course, they're different compounds, but nitric acid is one of the strong acids, whereas nitrous acid is actually a weak acid. A strong acid has a Ka that is very large. It's so large that uh, we usually do not even specify it. Uh, whereas for a weak acid, the Ka is generally small, so you can look up the Ka value for nitrous acid. Um, and uh, these Ka values are slightly different from different books, um, but roughly they're approximately the same magnitude. In my book, it's uh, the Ka for nitrous acid is given, is listed as uh, 4.0 times 10 to the minus 4. So uh, let me first write down the equilibrium and the equilibrium expression um, for the reaction of nitrous acid with H2O um, acting as an acid. HNO2 donates a proton to H2O, making it H3O plus and itself becoming NO2 minus. And uh, let me also write down the Ka expression. The uh, acid dissociation equilibrium constant for this reaction is H3O plus multiplied by NO2 minus divided by HNO2. And at equilibrium, those three concentrations in that combination is supposed to give me the value for the equilibrium constant, 10 to the minus 4. Okay, so the problem says we have an initial value for the nitrous acid um, being equal to 0 0.0475 molar, and we want to calculate the equilibrium concentrations, um, the pH, and also the equilibrium percent dissociation. Okay, so we can start that problem pretty easily. I'm going to try to do this ICE calculation on the right side of the screen. Hopefully all of that will fit. Um, so we have this, um, we have the equilibrium, which we will write again on the top. Um, let me write H3O plus first. So in a typical equilibrium calculation, we would set up this ICE table, which always has three lines. The first line is I for initial. The second line is C for change. The third line is E for equilibrium. And so we would have one column for each of the reactants and products. Uh, so I'm going to just put a double line between the reactants and products so that we know the two sides are different. And I am going to uh, cross out the column for H2O because H2O being the solvent in this reaction has no concentration. So uh, that does not come into the equilibrium pro problem. Uh, I'm going to write down what I know about the initial concentrations. So this is 0 0.0475 and 0, 0. 
uh, the next thing to do is to try to figure out the changes that has to uh, that have to occur to the reactant and product concentrations when they come into equilibrium. So um, to do that, I noticed that the reaction started with no products, so it must shift to the right in order to arrive at equilibrium. So because of just that, I know that the sign of the changes on the right are going to be positive, and the sign of the change on the left must be negative because the reaction is moving to the right. And then I'm going to represent the uh, value for the change by the unknown x, so x, x, x. And finally, I need to determine the proper coefficient to put in front of that x. And so for that, you just transfer the stoichiometric coefficient down from the balanced equation. So all of these is actually 1. So you take the 1, you put it there. So those are the proper changes and with the proper signs. And finally, I can apply the initial, uh, the change to the initial and arrive at the equilibrium value. So this is 0 0.0475 minus 1x. And each of these is just x and x. And so with that, I can put them back into the equilibrium expression. So here I have 0 0.0475 minus x for the HNO2 concentration. 0 0.0475 minus x. And then for the H3O plus concentration, I have x. And for the NO2 minus concentration, I also have x. So if I put all of those in with this unknown quantity x back into the equilibrium expression, I should get 4.0 times 10 to the minus 4. So now the remaining task would be to just solve that um, equation for the value of x. So you see that this equation has powers of x to uh, uh, the maximum is a, a second power of x. So these are called quadratic equations. And uh, quadratic equations could be solved by using the quadratic formula. So I'm going to just rewrite this equation on the next page and show you how the quadratic formula works for this, uh, for this equation. So again, what we have is uh, 4.0 times 10 to the minus 4 is equal to x squared divided by 0 0.0475 minus x. So I'm going to uh, move the denominator on the right to the left. So first of all, I would have 4.0 times 10 to the minus 4 multiplied by 0 0.0475 minus x is equal to x squared. And finally, I can expand the left side. So, so the first term is uh, 4.0 times 10 to the minus 4 multiplied by 0 0.0475, and that comes out to be 1.9 times 10 to the minus 5. And then the second term is just 4.0 times 10 to the minus 4x, and that is all equals to x squared. Now I can move everything to the right side, so I see that 0 is equal to x squared plus 4.0 times 10 to the minus 4x minus 1.9 times 10 to the minus 5. So this is in the form of a quadratic equation. So let me write down what the generic form of a quadratic equation looks like. So um, if you look at the association, then you can see that in this equation, the coefficient a is just 1. The coefficient b is equal to 4.0 times 10 to the minus 4. And the coefficient c is equal to negative 1.9 times 10 to the minus 5. 
So now with those three values, A, B, and C, I can put th them into the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula says that the solution is given by x equals to uh, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all under the square root sign divided by 2 multiplied by a. So all you now need to do is to basically stick in the numbers. So let me use a different color. Uh, so x is equal to minus b. The value of b is 4.0 times 10 to the minus 4 plus or minus b squared so I'm just going to write that in 4.0 times 10 to the minus 4 squared minus 4ac minus 4 a as you see is just 1 and c is negative 1.9 times 10 to the minus 5 and so this is all under one square root sign and this is all divided by 2 times a, which is 1. So you can punch that all into your calculator. Uh, oftentimes, there are a number of pluses and minus in the quadratic formula. So you want to be careful that you punch in all the numbers with the correct signs and make sure everything comes out right. And if you actually do that correctly, you will see that this comes out to be 4.0 times 10 to the minus 4 plus or minus 0 0.008726. I'm just keeping a couple more significant figures just to be sure. So that's divided by 2. So in the quadratic formula, there's always this plus minus because there are always two possible solutions. You would use the plus to arrive at one solution and you would use the minus to arrive at uh, the other solution. So so there, there are going to be two solutions. Uh, so if you take the plus sign, you the answer that you will get is 0 0.00416. And if you use the minus sign, you'll get the other solution, which is 0 0.00456. So you have two answers, uh, two solutions. The question is, which one is the right answer? Uh, so you can check easily. Uh, oftentimes, um, it would be obvious which one is the right answer. So we expect, because in the IC table, we figure out the signs of the changes. X is going to be a positive number, because on, on this side, you can see that these two concentrations are both X, and they must be positive. So the only answer that would be correct out of these two is the first one, so that is the correct answer. So this is what x is equal to. So finally, we can use that uh, to calculate the pH of the solution. So, uh, so we'll remember that x is its value. So we can finally come back to our IC table, and then we will uh, just write down a, um, a fourth line, and that I would just call the actual, which is, um, in fact, putting in the solution for x, what is the final value for these. Um, so we don't actually need all of them. Uh, we just need to calculate the pH, but you can do that for every single one. So the actual value for the HNO2 equilibrium concentration is 0 0.0433. And these are both just x, so they are both 0 0.00416, and that one is 0 0.00416. Okay, so finally, we can use that to solve the first part, <laughs> which is asking us to calculate the pH. So in this case, the pH is just going to be given by the H3O plus concentration. So pH is equal to minus log base 10 of the H3O plus concentration minus log base 10 of 0 0.00416 and that that gives me um, 2.38 
Okay, I think I have to be uh, to remind you again the significant figure convention on pH value is that the number of digits after the decimal point in the uh, pH value are significant, and that should reflect the precision of the least precise value you have in the calculation. I think that would be Ka, right, because Ka is 4.0 times 10 to minus 4. So that means that that uh, has two significant figures, so uh, the, that should limit the, rest, uh, uh, the precision for the rest of the calculation. So I think the correct answer, to be absolutely correct and consistent with the precision of Ka, should be 2.38 for the pH. Okay, so that is the solution for part A of the problem. And finally, to solve uh, part B of the problem, which is we need to calculate the percent dissociation. So let me change over to a different color. So part B, we have to calculate the percent dissociation. And let me just put the answer here because it doesn't need a lot of math. The percent dissociation is basically how much has dissociated relative to the initial amount. So the amount that has dissociated in the HNO2 is clearly equal to 1x. And we just calculated what x is, which is 0 0.00416. So the percent dissociation is simply equal to 0 0.00416 divided by the initial concentration, which is 0 0.0475. That turns out to be equal to 0 0.0875, and so that is 8.8%. Again, we're using two sig figs to reflect the uh, correct number of significant figures. Okay, so that's a solution for this problem, a very typical weak acid problem. But in this case, the uh, Ka value of this weak acid is not small enough uh, for us to just use uh, an approximate answer, so we have to execute the entire quadratic um, equation. Uh, but we will see a little bit later that uh, in a different problem that uh, sometimes we could have weak acids with such a small Ka value that we don't actually need to do this entire quadratic formula. Okay, so you can watch out for that uh, video later. Okay, so that's it for this problem, and if you've enjoyed this uh, video, please uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, like this video.